I started making films when I was in university with a friend who I still work with. In fact, two friends that I still work with, um, who I both and I knew them before college. So it's a funny. Type but it started off as a hobby. You weren't. You didn't start off with an ambition to be a filmmaker. Is that something that evolved as time went by? Um, I, I, when I was about 17, 16, 17, the BBC, which we could we could watch the BBC in, in the part of Ireland where I grew up, um, they started showing films by Bergman, by uh, Fellini, Tarkovsky, all the great European filmmakers. And I do remember at that time getting very seriously into um, what, I, what I, in my head then I called real cinema. Uh, so when I started playing with film in college, I, I think maybe there was an ambition, but not a, not a clear idea of how I could use that ambition to become a Just filmmaker. like many writers as they start writing, you know, you're doing it, you're thinking, how is this ever going to be something I can do all the time, or, or be something I can, I can support myself yeah. uh, uh, doing. And indeed, uh, you spent a long time here just making commercials. Before, even before Adam and Paul, yeah. and, and after, I think. I think I was, uh, I think I was very, I was a thing that many young people, ambitious sort of, heat young people are, which is that I was very arrogant and also very insecure at the same time. So, I wanted to make really good films. I, I was very self-critical, and I was very critical of other people's work, but I was also in a way afraid, I think, to test myself um, on, you know, so I, I, I looked for lots of ways of avoiding making a film for a number of years. And the best way of avoiding making a film was to uh, make other things like TV commercials, um, stuff that actually, I, I couldn't believe it when somebody paid me to make something. So that was a kind of shock. You, you mentioned uh, the the fear involved in the work. I don't think that ever really goes away, though. Not even uh, with success, what, no. what other people can judge as success. No, so in, in four weeks' time, I start another film in London. Um, and it's my sixth film, and I've made a lot of, you know, that's a, that's a, good, a good number of movies to make. And I've, they've all mostly been pretty well received by critics, and the last one, yeah, was a was a, 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 a you know officially a success, but I'm as freaked out, as scared, as uncertain as I imagine making this film as I was with that. Now that word you use officially a success because yeah. you're trying to weigh two different things. One is to achieve a, an official commercial success, maybe even a Hollywood kind of success. The other thing is you're making judgments yourself about the kind of film you'd like to be making. Yeah. I, I, and, and this is, if, if I can yeah. add, this is a little more complicated if you're a filmmaker than if you're a writer because filmmaking involves so many other people and their money. Yeah, so if you're a writer, you can, even if nobody's reading your work, you can still work. I mean, you can, you can practice your craft, you can uh, write stories and, and develop your, your technique and all of those things. Um, and, and, and it, 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 once you can support yourself, that's possible. But making films is expensive, even a, and also massively time-consuming and labor-intensive. So you need lots of people um, to to be to support you, and to, and so you are immediately part of a bigger industrial reality. And if you're like me and and you, you have that complex thing where you both want success, but you also don't trust it. It's very hard to, to, to work in that, in that space because there is lots of temptation. There are lots of people, if you're good at it, again in quotes, there are people who will want you to make commercial choices. And at the same time, and nothing, you know, and the artistic impulse is a, is a very complex one. So 
in the other direction there is uncertainty and self, uh, self-doubt and all of the things that come with that sort of work. So, you know, it's a very easy place to get lost in, I think. Okay. You were saying to me a little earlier, uh, ideally, as, as you make more films, you'd like to uh, make them more, f- for them to be much more your own project, to kind of get off the treadmill of making the next film and have really time to concentrate on something that's really authentically yours in yeah. terms of personal experience. Yeah. Uh, in all the films you've done until now, there have been various degrees of collaboration with yeah. writers, with, uh, with uh, um, script writers. Yeah. But mostly um, with writers, yeah. And that's, that's been a constant experiment. Yeah. Uh, would you like to say something? Yeah, I mean, about I that? like the experience. And I'm not complaining about what I'm doing. I'm incredibly lucky to work with people of great ability and I think go very deeply into the things that we um, are making films about. And what I've learned is, I've learned a lot about that process of collaboration. Um, and, and film, no matter, in fact, interestingly, so just to talk about collaboration, film is, even if you write every word, even if the idea is entirely generated from a personal experience, think of the most personal film project you can imagine. Sooner or later, you start to work with actors, cinematographers, designers, and particularly for me with the actors. Um, it, it can never be good if the if the director is like some kind of crazy dictator who says, okay, you now, this is exactly what you have to do. Because what happens is the actor then is really like a puppet. I mean, like a, a marionette. Um, and for me, the experience of collaboration with an actor is seeing things that I did not put in there. And uh, to, to bring it back to Adam and Paul, the, the, the film uh, you've all just seen, a uh, big part of that film is your collaboration with Mark O'Halloran, who was also the, the starring actor, the, the taller guy. He, he, he made the script with you, it was, it was a, a, a collaboration. Yeah. And he is a, he is a, a stage actor, primarily, yes. isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he hadn't acted in film before, I think, before this. And, and he had written a little, but well, that was a really great experience of collaboration. He seems very in control, you know, as an actor. You know, yeah. You can... No, he is. And, and in fact, the story with Adam and Paul is that up until six weeks before we shot, it was a different actor playing that part. And Mark was just the writer, or say just the writer, but he was the writer. And we had Tom, who plays the little guy, and then another actor who was playing his part. And through some crazy argument about money, which is always the argument, it's always about money, um, in most parts of life, um, this actor said, right, that's it, I'm gone. And he's sorry now. I hope he is. I think he might be. And... um, (laughs) I certainly never cast him again, and uh, Mark, we didn't know what we would do, we thought, well, you know, we we went through a whole series of uh, really big kind of searches, and eventually we decided that Mark could do it, because Mark, as as a person, is very gentle, in fact, he's much more like the little guy, and he's, he's sort of... He's not at all like the character he plays, but in the end, it was a very, it was a great collaboration, and he was able to stop being the writer on set and just be the actor. He, he sort of stepped back. Sorry, I just remembered you had the uh, young Karamitru. Uh, yes. Young Where did you find him? So young Karamitru, of course. Yeah, in, in young Karamitru. We we had this character of this Bulgarian guy, right? Sorry. Yeah. And um, we were thinking about who, who we could get to play him. And then somebody said to me, there's a famous Romanian actor called Jan Karamitru, who was acting in the Gate Theatre in Dublin, which is Dublin's most famous theatre. And we said, look, he will understand, I mean, he can, you know, he'll be able to do it, but do we dare to send him this script with all this stuff about Romanians in it? We thought, we thought he would like 
burn the script. Um, but, but he loved it and, and he was such a great person on set. I mean, uh, he's amazing. But, but so the joke of having a, a Bulgarian character complaining about Romanians, who is in fact not only Romanian, but I think he had been Romanian Minister for Culture, am I right? Yeah, in the yeah. early 90s, wasn't yeah. he? Uh, no, wait, no, I think it was around 96. Uh, would have been after that, yeah. no? Yeah. Well, it's because under Constantinescu, that would be 1996 or after that, yeah. yeah. I remember though because this came from the fact that Mark, myself and Mark, we always used to joke about this thing in Ireland where Irish people would <coughs> pick one nationality and every foreigner was that nationality. So for a while it was Bosnians because there were some Bosnian refugees and I remember loads of people in Dublin saying, oh, I'm sick of all the Bosnians. And there were probably only about 200 Bosnians, but as far as they were concerned, everybody was Bosnian. So I think somebody that Mark knew, everybody was Romanian. And so we, yeah. I'm just, I'm just wondering now, if, uh, before the film was made, were you not just a little bit nervous about how a comedy about junkies would go down. Yeah. Or there, there must have been some negative reactions. It, it, it's yeah, slightly... Yeah, re remarkably few. But before we started, there was a feeling... Um, I remember the first day of the shoot, we, the first thing we shot was the scene with the, <coughs> with, the, this, with the disabled kid, the kid with Down syndrome. And we were, it was 7 o'clock in the morning and we started and I, Mark and I looked at each other and I think we just said, if this is not good, you know, it's going to be such a disaster, we will be killed. Um, but there was a sort of, yeah, there was that feeling because, and I think it's, it's something people talk about now in regards to all sorts of projects about who has the right to tell what stories, you know. So you have like middle class kids like Mark and myself who were making a film about working class people whose lives were very different to ours. But I think we did it with a certain amount of tenderness towards the characters and and, and it's a it's a the, it is not a uh, a kind of critique of their lives in any way and very amazingly a lot of addicts became big fans of the film. So in you will know this cinema, there's a cinema on Parnell Street in Dublin, which has been there for like 20 or 30 years. It was in, a, in, that, in the part of Dublin where the film is set. And it had, it, the film ran for over three months there. And a lot of the audience were local, you know, users and ex-users. Uh, moving on to uh, your, your most recent film, uh, Room. That was originally a novel um, written by Emma O'Donoghue, an Irish writer who, who lives in Canada. Um, and you worked on the script of Room with her. It was another co-production this time yeah. with, a, with a writer. Uh, would you like to say something about that? Was that, was that very difficult? Uh, I asked that because yesterday uh, Cesar Paolo Badescu was talking about working with a director on the script of, of uh, his book, which is yeah. uh, just coming out, and, and the process. He felt it was just being like a tailor. It was, the director says, I want this, and he hands over the material, and the director tries to do... Well, it's, is that a little bit like that? It, you it's and it's a little bit like that. The, the really good thing about Emma was that she she's a very easy person to be around, to work with. She's... She's the rarest of things. She's a very happy writer. She's a really happy person, and that, she's the only, she's the happiest creative person I've ever, <laughs> I've ever met. Um, and so she's she's enthusiastic about things. She's not uh, her. She approaches things with a very kind of positive attitude. And it was her first screenplay. So in it, and and she was not um, defensive. She was very open to. Conversation. So we spent a long, long time sitting at her kitchen table, talking about how the film would differ from the novel, structuring it, um, 
And I think... Did, did you lift scenes directly from the novel or was it a lot more distant? There are places where again, the second half is quite different, the first half is quite similar. And I mean, the, the thing about a novel is that you can... A novel is a sort of an immersive experience. You can, I, I just, you know, you can digress. You, it, I mean, there are different ways of working, different sorts of novels, but, but you can certainly, um, there, there is a sort of, you can move sideways, you can move backwards, you can stop, you can pause and look around. Films are this unfolding of action in time, and, and, and they're very different. And in the second half of Room, it was a, it was a kind of a long goodbye to the characters you met and really got to know in the first half. That can't work in a film. So, but I think the process of working with Emma was a slow handing over. So at the beginning, it was me coming to her and saying, "I love your novel. I think I know how to make it into a film." Working with her, working with her, and then at, towards the very end, it was like the tailor, which is going, "Can you cut these lines or make this scene longer?" Or because then you're right into the the manufacture of the film and the shape of the film takes precedence. And is, is that is is the, the structure, the structure of the film is, is that something that is very clear for you before you start filming, or is there a certain amount that happens in the process of editing, where the film can actually be changed, or you decide you just don't like something, you cut it, or definitely. I mean, do you allow as you film that kind of latitude to throw yeah, stuff away? It's the same That's thing right. as I said about actors. At least for me, I know Michael Haneke. I saw him speak, and he said. Somebody asked him that very question, do things change? And he said in his very Germanic way, no, I, I write the film, I draw the storyboard, I shoot the storyboard, I edit the storyboard. And I think that's great. I mean, it, but, but, but for me, there's a sterility there if, you, if you're not responding to what's happening. And I always have an extremely strong impulse at the beginning, otherwise I couldn't make it. And that impulse does have very, it has key scenes, mood, um, kind of territory, and sometimes a strong structural idea, usually a pretty strong structural idea, but something always changes. And particularly in the edit, I always remove quite a bit of material, because I think we tend to overwrite and overshoot films, and then when you see them in the edit suite, you go, it's present, this idea is present, it doesn't need to be restated and restated, and then you can take things out and throw them away. All right, uh, I'm sure somebody else has questions, so I'm going to...